All right, guys, today I want to talk about JavaScript modules and specifically in the browser environment, not in the Node.js environment. So what I want to do is just give you guys a basic introduction into how to break your JavaScript into multiple modules and then be able to import those modules into your main script file that you reference inside of your index.html file so that you can have a really nice, clean, componentized program. This is going to be super helpful too because in my next tutorial which i'm not going to exactly say what it is because i want it to be a bit of a surprise but you guys are absolutely going to love it um, we're going to be using modules in the web browser so this is going to be kind of like a precursor to that to make sure that you guys have a good understanding of that before we do this amazing tutorial that you guys are going to be super excited about all right so i'm going to be using vs code for this tutorial if you're not using vs code that's perfectly fine but i'm going to be using shortcuts that are specific to vs code so just keep that in mind I'm also going to be using a server that comes as an extension with VS Code, but I'll also show you how to do it using just Node.js in case you seriously don't want to use VS Code, which is, again, perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and start like we're going to be starting a normal vanilla JavaScript app by creating an index.html file. And then my shortcut here that I like to use is just typing in ht and selecting HTML5, and it just creates this skeleton, which is super convenient. I'm going to replace this with like web modules tutorial. Cool. Now, this is where I'm going to show you guys how to serve the HTML file via a extension in VS Code. If you don't have VS Code, I'll show you how to do it in Node.js in just a little while. But here is the extensions tab. And then in here, I just type in live server. And you'll see this specific one. Click it. Go ahead and install this. It's super handy. And then when you have that installed, all you have to do is go to your index.html file, right click it and click open with live server. And then what ends up happening is you get a application served to you by live server very conveniently. However, as I said, if you don't want to use VS code, you can just do this with plain Node.js. So I've got a window open here and all you'll want to do is make sure you have Node.js installed. I've got a video I'll link to in the description for you to install Node.js if you don't know how, but let's assume you already have it installed. What you would do is you would go ahead and install globally the HTTP server module, which is right here. You can see it. If that text is a little bit too small, it just says npm install HTTP hyphen server space hyphen G, and then go ahead and press enter. Let this install. Cool, so I went ahead and made the text a little bit bigger for you guys so you can clearly see it. But once you have HTTP server installed using NPM and Node.js, what we wanna do is make sure you're in the directory where your index.html file is. So if I show the files in my directory, you can see index.html is here. And what I wanna do is go ahead and run this exact line of code here. We're gonna say HTTP hyphen server and then press enter. And now it is serving the um, HTML file for you. All you have to do is go to this URL right here, paste that into your web browser, and it will be served here. As you can see, web modules tutorial is in the tab. However, due to just pure convenience, I'm just going to continue using live server here within VS Code Suite. So I've got my browser window open on the right and my VS Code on the left. And so let me just shrink this one just a little tiny bit so that you can see more of the code. And what we want to do is we want to create a script file that is going to be our main entry point or the main application. So just like you would with a normal app, script.js, go ahead and create that file. And then I'm just going to put something like console.log, hello world, save it. And then in my HTML file, I'm going to create a script and set the source equal to script.js, close it off, save it, and make sure that it's logging it. You can see it's logging hello world, so we know that we are in fact um, importing our script.js file as we were planning. But what we want to do is we want to be able to import other modules into our script.js file here using our import syntax. Um, so how do we do that? Well, what I want to do first is I want to create a folder inside of here, and I'm going to call this folder modules. Then inside of here, I'm going to create a new file, and I don't know, I'm just going to call this module 1, module1.js. Now, just to kind of show how this works before we start digging into multiple modules and how this can actually be helpful for you, um, is I want to export a single variable just to kind of show how this thing works. So let's say we want to export an array. We're going to use the export keyboard and we're going to say const. So export const and we want to name this variable. We'll call it test array and set it equal to an array and we'll just say one, two, three. So we're exporting a const test array equal to one, two, three. Now what we want to be able to do is import this array into our main script file. So let's go ahead and use the import keyword. 
Then we're going to use um, open and closing brackets to destruct out exactly what from this module we want, which specifically is test array. So I'm going to copy this variable name and paste it into here. And I'm going to say from and the path to the file, which is modules slash module one. Now I'm going to save this. And what I want to do is try to log test array. So console.log console test array. And I'm going to save it. And let's look what happens here. As you can see, it's not logging test array. It says syntax error cannot use import statement outside of a module. So here's the trick. Go into your index.html file where you have your script tag. And before source or really in anywhere inside of the opening tag, put a type equals module. Now save that and you can see this says 404 not found. What we need to do is go back into our script file and the path here add .js to it. Save it and now you can see it is logging the array. So that's one way to export from a module. There's actually another way you can export from a module and that is by using default. Default is a little bit different than doing it this way. Let me go ahead and demonstrate what it looks like to use default. Now keep in mind if you use default, you can only have one default export from any module. So what you do is you simply replace these guys right here. So the const, the variable name and the equal sign, get rid of that and just put default. So what we're saying is export default and then this is the value that we're wanting to export as the default value being exported from this module. So when I save this, as you can see, it breaks. That's because when we use default, we actually have to import it in a different way. First of all, notice there's no variable name here, okay? So we aren't going to be destructing anything from this module. There is a default export, so we don't have to destruct anything out. And what are we gonna call this thing? We can actually call it anything we want. So whenever we have a default export, whenever we import it, we can call it whatever we want. So in here, I'm gonna call it whatever we want. And then I'm going to copy this and log it. And as you can see, it logs the array right here. We can also have a combination of both default and non-default exports. So let's just say this is the default thing we want to export. But above this, we also want to export a string. And let's say export const, because remember, we can only have one default export inside of a module. So we're going to export const and we're going to name this thing test string. And we'll just call it hello world to be generic. And I'm going to save that. And now in order to import that, we can use it, we can import it on the same line, but we have to destruct this particular portion. This part we don't destruct, but this part we do. So what does that look like? Well, we have the default export here. And what we can do is put a comma and then the destruct part here. And the name of that was test string. And when I save it, I want to go ahead and log it as well, test string. When I save it, you can see it's logging both of these now. So you can see we can have a combination of exporting both default and non-default in the same module, but the module can only have one default export. Okay, cool. But now what I want to do is show you how this can be handy. Now this, again, is in the web browser environment. This is not in the Node.js environment. So if you've ever used anything like Angular or if you've used React, that uses JavaScript modules in the Node.js environment using things like Webpack. That's a little bit different than what we're doing here. This is in the web browser. So I'm going to give you a real life example where I personally use uh, JavaScript modules in the browser. And that is specifically when I am creating libraries of functions or functions that I want to reuse in different applications. And one function that I like to reuse in several different applications is this. And I'll show you this exact example right now. Let's say I have a bunch of divs inside of a index.html file or any HTML file, and they all have the same class name. And I want to loop through these. How can I do that? Well, normally what you would possibly do is you would use array.from and then document.get elements by class name. You would put that inside of there. This is an HTML collection. And then array.from is converting that HTML collection into an array so that we can use for each on it. So we can say for each now. And now what we can do is actually just like <laughs> console.log index, but we have to pull that out. So it'll just be like item and index. Now, when I save it, you can see we are looping and logging each index. However, what I like to do, um, it's really convenient to me, is to just simply have to extend the prototype of HTML collection. So say HTML collection dot prototype um, dot array and array is the name of the function that I'm going to be creating a new method on HTML collection. I'm calling it array and I'll set that equal to a function using function expressions here. And I'm just going to return array from this. And all this is saying is this is the thing you're calling array on. So this in this case here would be literally this highlighted portion here. So array dot from this and we're returning that. And so now I can call 
this function on that. So I'm gonna cut this out. And just to show you that it works, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna use dot array, which I just created, save it, and you can see it still works. But let's just say I'm like, wow, I like this. This is pretty convenient. And I want to create more functions that extend from HTML collection, like a whole library of methods that are convenient to me. But I wanna reuse these in several different apps. I don't wanna just use it for this application. Well, what you can now do is use modules. So I'm gonna cut that piece out and I'm gonna paste it into my module one. And in here, I'm going to just before this say export default. So now I'm exporting default. If I save this, you can see it doesn't work. That's because I have to import it. And remember, we're using a default export here. So all we have to do is say import, and I'm gonna call this array, and I'm gonna say from modules slash module one dot JS. Save it, and now you can see it's working just as expected. So now I can use this, this method by just simply importing it. Now what I wanna do is convert that default export to a non-default export and be able to export multiple of these prototype extensions here. So what I wanna do is go ahead and I'm gonna rename this from module one. I'm gonna rename this to HTML collection and I'll have to update the import as well. Change that from module one to HTML collection, save it, make sure it still works. Excellent. What we wanna do is we want to go ahead and basically just get rid of this. Um, and just say const, and we'll call this array, is equal to that. So now we're saying array is equal to that. Now what we wanna do is we want to export this. So let's say export const array is equal to that. Now let's go ahead and save it. And we have to destruct this. Remember, if it's not a default export, we have to destruct it out. And now when we save this, you can see it's still working. So what I wanna do is add a second one to our library here and we'll call it export const, whoa, export const first and set that equal to HTML collection dot prototype dot first. That's a function. And all it's gonna do is it's going to return this zero. So it's gonna return the first item in the HTML collection that we call this on. So I'm gonna save this and in order to import it, we simply put a comma and then import first. So now we have two things that we are importing from this same module right here. So what I wanna do is I just want to console.log. And by the way, um, quickly just put in something so you can make sure that we're pulling out the right one. So one through five here. And now what I wanna do is inside of here, I just wanna uh, copy this, paste it, and then call dot first on it. Save it and you can see now here is literally the first item in the div. So you know that the first method is working. So here we are exporting two pieces from a module, two prototype functions, and we are importing them here, and then we're using them. So if we wanted to use this module in other apps on our server or on our local computer, what we would have to do is just move this to more of a global workspace. So like definitely outside of this project, we would move this file to like the home folder or somewhere at the root level. And then inside of our script.js, when we import it, we would import it from that location instead of this particular directory. And we would have to make sure that our server is set up to serve that file and all that good stuff. But that is lessons for another day. But as you can see, this is how you can use modules inside of the web browser in a way that will benefit you. All right, guys, so I hope you have a better understanding of using JavaScript modules in the web browser. Again, there are more ways you can use JavaScript modules in the web browser, but I just wanted to give you guys a pretty decent basic introduction to using them in the web browser. And hopefully you can come up with your own ways to use them and benefit you guys throughout your daily lives as developers. Awesome, so if you guys like this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.